you all. I see you've bound my private quarters for my study and slumber. Ordinarily, I would not allow such strangers into my abode. But since you are guests of my father, I will honor his request to show you around and tell you a little bit about myself. I am Josephine Choate, one of the younger and one of only two daughters of my father, Joseph. Yes, we share the same namesake. It is unusual in our time and era to bequeath the lesser sex with the namesake of the patriarch of the family. But as you have probably ascertained from your initial journey through our home, my father was open to what the populace have donned, free thinkers. But being married to my highly artistic mother, he was always gracious and open to new ideas and modern practices. Oh. Do excuse my rudeness with my slight yawn. I've had ever so late an evening and early morn. Last night, my esteemed father had his equally esteemed friend and colleague, President McKinley, over for dining and recreational and somewhat exhausting parlor games. These parties can run quite late in the summer months when father does not have to work the next day. Last night was an especially interesting evening at the dinner table. It seems that President McKinley's wife suffers from seizures and she had bouts of staring straight ahead for minutes at a time. We all experienced the awkward silence with empathy and concern when she first showed signs of her oncoming seizure. Then, all of a sudden, President McKinley quickly and assuredly puts one of our cloth napkins over his wife's head, covering it entirely. He explained that this was common practice when his wife suffered from such a malady, so that she may feel safe within her own small tent of fabric solitude. <laughs> Father later remarked to me in private that he thought our president was more concerned with his wife causing an awkward evening for our family and guests, so it would be better to hide his wife's disturbing countenance until the situation had run its course. I, for one, would be very empathetic towards the poor woman who had to suffer an embarrassing consequence. My parents would probably think it proper even for me to be stifled with such a heinous practice when I go on at the dinner table about my failing grades and my problems with my own suitors and my constant vomiting after a beef-stricken meal. <laughs> As you can see, my room is quite spacious. I was privileged with such ample quarters because my mother was so intent upon adorning each of her children's rooms with artifacts she would have transported home during her annual excursions to the Orient. Father thought that his study was beginning to become overgrown, as he politely put it, with said artifacts. So we made room in my room for the impending overflow. The shadow box on the wall by the fireplace holds some of my favorite gems, relics, and curiosities all imported from Burma. Please peruse at your own leisure. The rug you see here is an oriental, Pakistani, tightly woven piece, which is smooth to the touch, perfect for walking barefoot through the summer months. These are priceless India silk sheets upon the bed where I sleep. That is strictly for comfort, because if you are not acquainted with my future, I do eventually end up dying from my illness in this bed at age 27. <laughs> I have a hand-me-down bed at home, which is an East Lake piece made for people smaller than me. I decided long ago not to die in my own painfully uncomfortable bed because, because why shouldn't I have the comfort of something luxurious like this one? I am just as ill as Miss Josephine, and although I'm not her age yet, I plan to be. I don't think I will plan any sort of morbid journey into my grave until I've reached my Josephine's age. We have to suffer first before, we have to suffer before we die. We have to give life a chance to catch up to us. Not in high school, not in college, not adjacent to the stupid, insipid, socially retarded little emo girls who try to leave this earth in a racial and melodramatic, no, oh, I'll show you mommy and daddy type way, and oh, oops, I cut the wrong way again. I guess I'll just go to breakfast and go to some of my classes. Josephine, I, that is, did have a joyous life, though I died quite early in the midst of it. Oh, I had such fun in these walls of now McKeague playing chess with my father, badminton with my brother in the larger groves by the gardens before he went mad. Mm -hmm. Oh, hide and seek with the hired help, and sometimes, sometimes I wish I could stay forever. Please 
make your way into my sister Mabel's room, which is adjoined to mine, and have a pleasant afternoon. Oh, I see you found my private quarters for my study and slumber.